owner of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McBurney, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AIM Impact on Your Health. AIM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AIM Impact on Your Health, heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AIM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, and fascinating health topics, and where we do encourage you to call in to join in today. Well, today, uh, yes, we are going to have a good friend of ours, Jerry Singleton, uh, come aboard with us about half past the hour. We're going to get some things out of the way first. We've got to clear the air about this uh, fish oil controversy. I guess maybe I've got started. I don't know if it's clearing your mind yet. I'm going to try to help you out a bit uh, to clear some things up about why fish oil and I continue to say, and will continue to say, that fish oil is hazardous to your health. Uh, and we'll get into more of some of the, maybe the nitty-gritty scientific uh, information that will confirm that and enable you to get comfortable with that. Anyway, uh, today is a postscript on the fish oil controversy, as well as moving toward uh, up-and-coming dates in the future on MCG testing. Many of you out there, of course, uh, have done uh, your first MCG testing, and you're awaiting the opportunity to get the second MCG, or as we say, multifunctional cardiogram, done again. Well, Jerry Singleton represents Premier Health, the uh, sole distributor and marketer of the device in our area. He's been with us many times before. He will be our special guest today. So, uh, and at any time, by the way, you can call in to ask a question and to make a comment. That number, of course, as always, will be. 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. It is a Friday version of the show. It is a get them up out of town version of the show with a, a couple of caveats. You can all switch some gears and get pretty comfortable with it. Now, as the calendar shapes up, uh, Ed Kane will be back with us on Wednesday. Now, this, this issue with fish oil isn't as easy as a concept as... Uh, uh, the vitamin C controversy was, you know, that's not 10 years old. That's established, even though uh, those who don't appear to that know about it, uh, as they speak to you, absolutely can't run and hide from those facts about vitamin C. It's uh, coming from corn, and if it comes from corn, uh, it cannot be good for you. That's done. Uh, but that was a pretty simplistic explanation. The issue of uh, the uh, uh, fish oils, requires a little more study. I'm going to spend a moment on trying to clarify, I think, a couple of points in anticipation of our return with Ed Kane, who's going to be with us on Wednesday of next week. Then uh, as we approach, and we are quickly approaching, by the way, the end of the month of July, uh, finally as we hit August, Susan Smith-Jones is going to be with us on the 3rd. Uh, got a guest, just got the uh, publicist gave me a call the other evening, and uh, we have a guest scheduled for the 17th. Um, and I'll just wait and hold off until I get biographical information about her. At least I know it's a female guest. And then, um, gee whiz, way into the future, David Brownstein coming back talking about salt, your way to health. Now, there'll be plenty of opportunity to fill in uh, the blanks between now and then. But as it stands right now, those are on the schedule. Don't want to forget, those of you out there, uh, especially if you're diabetic, RTD dressings, uh, they are, um, well, you are responding, folks. It, uh, if you're a diabetic or not, I can't really tell. All I know is many of you are taking me up on the opportunity to purchase this unique kind of dressing, uh, dressing uh, a la, not salad dressing, <laughs> dressing in a um, format of uh, taking care of wounds. And particularly, I speak to the diabetic population, but you absolutely don't have to be a diabetic to enjoy the benefit of RTD dressings. They're just the newest thing to come down the pike. 
uh, and uh, certainly not really available in any venue that I know of uh, for the general public. Right now they're being found in operating rooms throughout the city of Pittsburgh. Surgeons are utilizing these forms of dressings as they're making their final closures and um, uh, getting ready to put the, the, uh, the wound dressing on before the patient is taken from the operating room. In the past, that has always been combinations of and a vast amount of gauze. Now, there's a change. And the change is RTD dressings are making it into the operating rooms because, well, it is absolutely a better way of handling the potential issue of infection. Gauze only acted as a barrier. RTD dressings actually draw out the pathogens from the wound into the dressing itself. Uh, these 4x4 four four inch pads, uh, they're blue, they, they sort of look like, um, um, well, it's not really foam rubber, but it absolutely has a little bit of give to it. Supposedly, these things can soak up 10 times the their body weight or the, the weight of them in the in fluid. If you put one of these in a glass of water, according to Alan Ridgway, it'll suck up every bit of water within it. And uh, that makes it a quite unique dressing. And then it's impregnated with a host of antimicrobials, too. Uh, anyway, RTD dressing is available here. Uh, four by four a pad is $25. And uh, you can get multiple uses out of that pad. It doesn't have to remain sterile as uh, most other dressings would. Uh, this is going to be able, as long as it's kept in a plastic bag, it's going to be just fine. And you cut as you need and only enough to cover the wound. And you'd have to have an awful large wound to require 4x4, 4x4-inch four four, uh, four, four, four four dressing. Simply Freeze, another product that uh, we've launched here within the past uh, couple of weeks for people with muscle aches and pains. We have a 3-ounce um, roll-on version. Greaseless, stainless, it's a vanishing cream and a vanishing scent uh, for those with muscle aches and pains. And then, literally launched on Wednesday, our newest of uh, the products, um, I'm guessing, not really obtainable anyplace else in Pittsburgh, at least at this time, and it's the Body Bio product. This is the substitute, folks, for the fish oils, which absolutely are harmful and hazardous to your health. We now know that the ratio of uh, replacing fatty acids is a ratio of 4 to 1 of omega-6s to omega-3s that was never known before until Dr. Yehuda discovered this in 1994, and it has been proven over and over again to be true and valid since that time. Also, too, they have noted that the best representative of the omega-6s uh, are not animal sources. They are plant sources. In the case of the omega-6, it's sunflower oil, by the way, organic in this product called Body Balance, 4 to 1 oil. And the omega-3 represented is flaxseed oil. This is a uh, blending of 4 to 1 ratio of those two substances. It is how you should be, and, has, and it has been determined scientifically, that you should be receiving your essential fatty acids, and that the fish oil approach to um, dealing with the fatty acid issue is probably, uh, well, it should be on its way out. Who knows how long it's going to take to kill that idea. Um, but nonetheless, science has stepped in. I, and I think ultimately you, should want to go and will end up going with the science because science will hold up and the fallacy in fiction will not. Now, a little bit about maybe clearing this thing up, because uh, with respect to uh, why it is that fish oil is hazardous to your health, uh, as we got to the punchline on this on Wednesday, uh, I think it got a little bogged down and confusing. So let me take just a moment, and I'm going to say that this is in anticipation of Ed Kane's return. I think this is the, the real expert, I'm, I'm sure it is, the real expert on uh, fatty acids, literally in the country as far as I'm concerned. But uh, here's the fact that I think you want to know about, that, and keep this one in mind, because this will uh, always, and this is the part that will never fail you, this is the science that is the reason why fish oils are harmful. You have a group of three fatty acids called 
the icosanoids. The ICO part of that stands for the number 20, and these are 20 carbon fatty acids. There are three in the body. There are only three. You build these. These are like third floor fatty acids, the, the, the raw ingredients of your sunflower oils and your um, um, flaxseed oils are lower carbon chains, and you end up building these three icosanoids in a way that allows you to have them in appropriate, in appropriate proportions. So the three icosanoids are DGLA, um, AA, which is arachidonic acid, and EPA, which is icosopentanoic acid. Forgetting about these big, long words. Let's just go with EPA, AA, and DGLA. And what was never known to me, uh, may have been revealed in one of my previous uh, medical courses, but I can't remember it, is that these exist in the human body in a set proportion, a set normal distribution. And the distribution goes like this. Of these icosanoids, 10% are found in the form of DGLA. 89% are found in the arachidonic acid, or the double A form, arachidonic acid, which we said the other day was the king of all fatty acids. And when Ed Cain comes back next Wednesday, I've asked him to talk about why it is that arachidonic acid is king. And then there's this third one, EPA, uh, which one half of, of a percent of the icosanoids of these three add up to 100%. DGLA of 10, AA of 89, and EPA of half. Now, do you got those numbers in mind? Now that you do, let's talk about fish oil. Because fish oil is a combination of essentially a 50-50 split of DHA and EPA. EPA is able to be consumed through fish oil. That's just how it occurs in nature, folks. And after a certain amount of time, everybody usually responds well with fish oil. So if you read the articles about, I feel great taking fish oils, and uh, I know that you read and the gentleman called up the other day to talk about how article after article after article seems to indicate that fish oils are a wonderful way of providing the body with what it requires. And that's probably absolutely correct up to a point. But at the point where you start to alter the, that distribution of DGLA of 10%, Arachidonic acid of 89% and EPA of one half, there is the step you don't ever want to take. And it is possible if you're taking tremendously large amounts, and by the way, you are taking tremendously large amounts of EPA, which normally in the body should only exist at one half of a percent of the total icosanoids that you have in the body should be EPA should be no more than a half. While the uh, arachidonic acid is 89% of all the icosanoids. Once you have done that, and once you have disturbed that ratio, there is a price to pay, a biochemical price, and a health consequence price to pay for having made that switch, for having adjusted and changed the proportions. They are supposed to exist 10 to 89 to one half. And when you start taking fish oil and you're getting whopping amounts of EPA over time, the EPA levels rise precipitously, disturbing the normal ratio that surely you shouldn't find EPA in any greater amounts than one half of a percent of all the icosanoids. And when that happens, EPA directly interferes with the production and the sustenance and maintenance of the proper amount of AA. Does it really affect DGLA? By the way, I don't know why it doesn't affect DGLA. I think I'll ask Ed Kane why it is that the elevated elevation in EPA, which is going to come with the consumption of fish oils over time, 
Why it has a detrimental effect on uh, arachidonic acid, not on DGLA, I don't know. But I, I will tell you that it does. And uh, I'm thinking of a case uh, that was presented last weekend when I was in New Jersey attending a conference down there in Millville, not Millvale, Millville. We have Millville. They have Millville. Um, uh, it was a case of a boy, 10 years old. The boy just was lying in a ball on the floor. And uh, when the case got presented, what we found out is that this boy had been given uh, 10 teaspoons of fish oil a day for quite some time. And of course, I'm guessing that the parents would have felt that this was a very healthy thing to give the child. But of course, knowing what you now know, obviously in a child to begin with at that age and receiving what would have to be whopping, and I mean super amounts of DHA and EPA, the change in the proportions had obviously occurred in this boy to the extent that he could not propagate a nervous impulse down any of his nerves. And as, a, and as such, he lied as a blob on the floor. He had to be carried around. He was literally lifeless because he had not, no ability to propagate nervous impulses down any of his nerves for motor function control. When you finally saw the analysis, the fatty acid analysis that was presented uh, during that case, and you learned that he had, I think, a 3,000% 3,000% increase in EPA, you then saw that the treatment here was a simple one. Get the kid off the fish oil and bring in the 4 to 1 ratio. And having done that, and literally within a few days, that boy walked out of that clinic. And we're going to talk about the boy on the floor here as um, as we return with Ed Kane next week. I just wanted, I think, to provide a little bit more insight as to why it is that fish oil is hazardous to your health. It is scientifically known that um, the correct ratio is, is now 4 to, 4 to 1 ratio and having nothing to do with EPA and DHA. It has to do with linoleic acid, which the best representative of that is sunflower oil, and alpha-linolenic acid, which the best representative of that is flaxseed oil. And these are the building blocks by which the icosanoids and by the way, why are the icosanoids so important? They are the three main ingredients that forms all of the prostaglandins in the body. And I think that's going to be my limitation right there in terms of uh, uh, describing the various forms of prostaglandins and how they're used. And uh, although it has been part of my medical study, it isn't absolutely available to me in my mental acumen at this moment. We're going to rely on Ed Kane to supply that information to us when he returns on Wednesday. And we'll talk about arachidonic acid and why, uh, once you disturb that, you have gone a step too far. Um, I think, to put it into a nutshell, um, we probably should have known, as I look at it now, um, that something was, I'll use the word, okay, I'll use it. Something was fishy. Whenever we found that the conventional medical community fell in love with fish oil, this is this could be comparable, in my opinion, to the same romance that occurred back in the 1970s and 80s when the medical profession fell in love with statin drugs. And then holy matrimony occurred between the medical profession and the pharmaceutical world, and voila, we got our statins, and we've been getting statins run down our throat in quite a large proportion ever since. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, folks, but the uh, medical profession and the pharmaceutical industry have gotten cozy again. There's now a fish oil that is FDA approved and marketed by the pharmaceutical industry. Marketed? No, it's patented by the pharmaceutical industry. See, that's the key as it was just fish oil only, it couldn't be patented. But now, 
there's a new substance. It's called Lavaza, and it is flying off the shelves. Um, it is consumed uh, with a prescription only, uh, and with that, um, that holy bit of, uh, of sanctioning that uh, occurs to the prescription written by any doctor, the public is out there believing that they're doing the right thing, and that probably was the hint. And I, I say that, yes, with my cynical mind, and I um, um, have to beg your forgiveness for being, being so cynical about this, but uh, whenever you see the medical profession jumping behind a supplement, there's a problem. And as it turns out, there's a big problem. How you'll weigh in on this, well, that'll be your decision. But the science will come from here, and science will win out, just as it did in the vitamin C controversy. Science has won out. And uh, pretty much it's now uh, well established out there that any form of vitamin C that comes from corn would be medically inappropriate. And, and, uh, and I would, it was um, a pleasure of mine to be able to pass that information on to you, no matter how well the medical community and the alternative medical community was able to handle that information. Well, here we are now with a new crossroads. How will they handle this information? Well, let's find out. We'll be hearing a lot about it, I'm sure. Uh, you need to question your practice, because I'm going to guess that fish oil was a part of your daily regime and maybe it still remains that way. Maybe you're not convinced and you need some time to, to mull this around and we'll try to help you out as best we can. All right. I'm going to take a short break. When we come back, I've uh, got a couple things in the news. By the way, you can knock on the door. Anybody out there angry at all? 412-825-6262. We're going to take some call phone calls mainly. And um, i got a couple of uh, hot items out there in the media world to bring to you. Then, of course, we'll take another break a few minutes from now and get with Jerry Singleton talking about MCT. Be back in a moment. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no one. It seems that every time you turn on the television radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow. It seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Have you been to the doctor lately? Was the fatigue top of your complaint list? Even if your doctor asks you what you eat, the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day is a dream in your busy schedule. What if you learned of a product five years in the formulation that delivers five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce? That's right, it's through the spirit. The blessings of through the spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit array product rich in antioxidants and minerals. Your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith, but through the spirit help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Through the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Through to the Spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugar. That's 1-800-442-3793 for your good health. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. <laughs> Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AIM Impact on Your Health. Heard here in KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you on a Friday version of the show. Yes, it is a get them up out of town version of the show. You can call in at any time. Anything on your mind is okay with me. 412-825-6262. We'll get that job done. 412 
825-6262. Um, yeah, we start out with a bang. Fish oils are harmful to your health. Uh, you got a problem with that? Uh, thinking maybe I don't know about this. I'd be happy to hear from you uh, and uh, anyone else out there with anything on your mind. Uh, we're going to probably take a break in about another 10 minutes here, meeting up with Jerry Singleton to talk about MCG testing. Uh, but it's been a while since I've had a chance to go over the weekly roundup. Normally, and I do this, I'm incessantly on the blogosphere and looking at the various forms of media trying to find out what's happening out there in the alternative world or in the general medical world. I uh, came up with a couple contributions I'd like to add to the, to the list. Uh, this one... Um, comes from Time CNN, reporter Meredith Melnick, and um, more bad news. Uh, I'm guessing it's a she. More bad news, she says, uh, for diet soda drinkers. So what's going on with the diet soda drinkers? Well, the data presented recently at the American Diabetes Association scientific sessions suggests that diet drinkers may actually contribute to weight gain and that the artificial sweeteners in them could potentially contribute to type 2 diabetes. In one study, researchers from the School of Medicine at the University of Texas Health Science Center, San Antonio, looked at aggregate data from 474 older adults in what has been called the San Antonio Longitudinal Study of Aging. I actually like the an acronym they use to describe the San Antonio Longitudinal Study of Aging. It's known as SALSA, and uh, I think that's very appropriate coming out of San Antonio. Anyway, at the time of the enrollment and at uh, three follow-up exams thereafter, all participants reported their diet soda intake and were measured for height, weight, and waist circumference. The researchers learned to track any association between diet soda drinking and body fat over time. What they found was that all participants saw their waistlines expand, but those who reported drinking diet soda at 70% greater uh, than anyone else increased in waistline growth more than non-drinkers uh, had, done, had done so. Among the frequent drinkers, those who consumed two or more diet sodas a day, the waistline growth was 500% greater than above than among the non-drinkers. So uh, bad news for diet soda drinkers. They're saying the reason for it is um, when you eat something sweet, your body is preparing for you to come across with a, a platter full of calories, and when you don't produce, the body rebels and gives you the fatty waistline anyway. Anyway, I thought you'd like to hear about that. Uh, more bad news for the diet soda world. Hey, have a knock on the door. Come on the store. Hello and welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Good morning, Dr. Courtney. Hi. Uh, once again, uh, I want to uh, maybe play the devil's advocate with regards to this. Oh, you are the scientific contributor to all callers out there. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, I think, I mean, you bring up extremely valid points and got me to thinking about quite a few things. But uh, I was doing some numbers the other day and... Normally, I take somewhere between three and nine fish oil capsules, not every day, but I would say at least every other day. And you and a whole bunch of other folks, too. Sure. And, but the DHA and EPA in those capsules, uh, I mean, they're one gram, they're 1,000 milligrams, but less than half of that is uh, your active ingredient. Uh, I think there's more EPA than DHA. I think there's about a two to one ratio, and you're taking about about 400 mil, maybe 380, 400 milligrams of uh, omega-3. Okay. That's the EPA component, the omega-3. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, um, if I was taking the max, which would be nine grams, that would be about 90 calories, a little over 90 calories. Uh, you know, using 9.3 calories per gram. I was looking at a bag of potato chips, and one ounce of potato chips had over uh, 9 grams of fat in it. It depends on what brand you buy. That's sort of medium, okay? 
And so uh, when you're ingesting these things, I think we ought to keep in perspective um, the amount. And I still think the amount, even, even at nine or ten capsules a day, is insignificant compared to our source of fat from the remainder of our diet. And unless you're like full out olive oil, which is an omega-9, then you're eating an awful lot of omega-6 in the American diet. And if you're a meat eater on top of that, you're getting a fair share of arachidonic acid um, from your meat sources. So I think in an, adu an adult, you gave an example of a, I think it was a child. Little boy, 10-year-old boy. 10-year-old boy. Uh -huh. So I don't know what his weight was. Oh, uh, he was typical weight for a 10-year-old. He wasn't obese and he wasn't skinny, so... I mean, uh, okay. but if he was taking 10 teaspoons a day, I think a teaspoon is more than a gram. I think it's... Oh, yeah, that was a complete uh, overdose. Yeah. A complete overdose, but yet we had a boy lying in, as a pile, uh, as a pile of tissue. Couldn't move. Yeah. So, I mean... Uh, it seems like an extreme, extreme case. Yeah, it, well, uh, to, to bring a point to fruition here, I use an extreme example... Because uh, no one that I know of has taken 10 teaspoons of, uh, of fish oil a day, or at least I, I don't know of one. Uh, and, of course, the body weight of a 10-year-old is going to be able to demonstrate the ill effects of such large amounts much more than an adult would. But all that being said, we still had a boy who was a blob of tissue lying there on the floor. Couldn't move uh, because he had disturbed this relationship. And that's, that's the point I'll make to yeah, you. No, even it sort of reminds me of a reverse of a movie called Lorenzo's Oil. Uh, by the way, yes, I'm very familiar with Lorenzo's Oil. It's a quick Pittsburgh connection there, too. Yeah, but uh, I think, what is that? Was That oil he discovered was either a, a, an 18 or 20 carbon oil. I'm not uh, sure. Exactly. exactly right. Exactly right. And the, um, and, uh, the, the um, re restoring facts to a normal level based on the pathology that that particular child uh, was exhibiting in the Lorenzo's oral story is probably the best lesson that we can learn from because t these fats have extremely potent capabilities taken in the correct proportions and I'm going to say unfortunately when taken in incorrect proportions. I think that I'll come back to what I believe is the most salient point that you just, uh, that I never knew before. Now maybe you did because I always relied on you and still do by the way as a scientific contributor here. But if these are the three icosanoids, and that they're, if they're directly responsible for all prostaglandin activity in the body, and they are found in a normal state of 10% of, of DGLA, 89% arachidonic, and only one half percent EPA, and you start disturbing that one half percent, which you can easily do by taking amounts of fish oil, which have a disproportionate amount of EPA in them anyway, you, once having disturbed that ratio, what do you take it to? I don't know, EPA, if you take it to a 1%, are you going to exhibit any um, problems if it goes to 1% and your arachidonic acid falls? Yeah, the only exception that I would say to that is in those indigenous peoples that eat an awful lot of fish and blubber, et cetera, et cetera, now, I don't know what their uh, what the lipid profile or panel would be, but they are eating a whole food source. So uh, yeah. I'm focusing on the fact that uh, yeah, well, when you eat fish, you're not eating all omega three. And you've now answered you are now answered your own question, in my opinion, because I think that no one should, in terms of the fatty acid content, now ever run away from fish. Eat as much fish as you want. Now, hey, you better be careful on the on the kind of fish that you're eating. Because now the mercury issue does come into play, but from a fatty acid viewpoint, no, eat the fish, just like eat the orange, okay, for the vitamin C, or eat the vegetables for uh, all these other vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. But when you have an overabundance, and that 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 thing with the, I guess it all started. I can remember um, when Nordic Naturals hit the um, the, sh the show circuit meaning I would go to my conferences, and one year I went, there was no such thing as Nordic Naturals. Next time I go, here's Nordic Naturals, and that's the earliest uh, 
time I can remember, fish oils gaining such prominence. They talked about how they could handle. They catch the fish, and they they prepare the fish. They freeze it. They extract the stuff right on the boat before the boat comes back to the pier. Their big selling point was how fresh it was that they could bring that product to you, and that this is the way, the best way to get your fatty acids. But um, this this issue of tilting your uh, level of EPA, I believe that's a delicate mantle that you shouldn't be messing with. So what's the big deal here? Hey, you need to take an oil, absolutely. But you need to be taking basement oils and staying away from the third floor. The third floor oils are your icosanoids. They get put together by you consuming the right building blocks. Don't come in with putting a roof on the place, meaning but well beyond the third floor by taking a fish oil and, and not providing the building blocks for allowing it to get there on its own. The body will produce with the amount that it needs. But if you come in and you're slapping a roof on a uh, a basement, you have you have jumped you have jumped a bunch of steps, and there's a health consequence to pay for it. And the um, and it, because science is now determined. By the way, uh, th this all comes to be because of the work of Dr. Yehuda from 1994. So this has been known now for 16 years. It remained... But I, I, but I would also comment that if you're in excess of a 70 kilogram uh, human being, that there would be a very uh, safe margin. For instance, I'm over 70 uh, kilograms, so therefore uh, when I calculate out 9 or 10 capsules per day, uh, compared to my and, and based on uh, my body fat being probably around 20 percent, maybe a little higher, uh, then you find out that you're taking almost a homeopathic amount of these materials. Although I will say there can be an accumulation of lipids in the body, but it's such a slow process. And I don't, you I don't a child versus an adult, you've got the enzyme situation going on. Uh, a child may have better lipases than an adult, and so therefore, when you give a child some fish oil like this, you're probably going to get much better assimilation and processing, absorption, fate, and excretion than you could than you would in an adult that was, let's say, in excess of 40 years of age. And of course, body weight being in excess of 70 uh, kilograms. So um, I only say to balance the argument that if you're taking sort of a homeopathic amount, and I, and I, but by the way, uh, nine, nine, you got to... Uh, nine grams is not, is not significant. Oh, wait a minute. How You are too scientific for me to allow you to get away with that one about homeopathic amounts. Where are you coming in with nine grams being a homeopathic amount when the most potent of the homeopathics are the lesser amounts anyway? Well, you're you're only 40% omega-3s uh, out of each gram. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to ask. Let's say I took 10 grams. I'd be getting about 450 milligrams of, of total, uh, let's see. Four, no, I'd be getting about 4.5 grams out of the 10 every time I ingested. Plus, being an adult over 40, I'm not so sure my digestive enzymes are... And, and we don't even know exactly what the absorption phase and excretion of fish oil is. For instance, if your lipase works on an 18-carbon chain, what do you end up with? What, what is actually delivered to the cell membrane? Yeah, I, well, I'm pretty sure that uh, the EPA is getting there virtually untouched. But I think these are great questions. I'm going to wait because I'm not pre I don't think I'm equipped to answer the questions. I think you pose the right ones. So. Um, well, you know, um, I'm not saying I'm, uh, I'm, I'm what the answers are. Well, let's just say I'm not going to wrestle your fish oil away from you because I don't. <laughs> I think it's too difficult for you to have to meet with science on this one. But let's let science take its time to make the convincing argument that I think it's already it has made, and science should win us both out. Okay, so I'll say that we'll we'll continue to confront this. We'll keep bringing Ed back. We. Orthodox medicine has always poo-pooed supplements because any time you extract something out of a whole food, 
Now you're causing the liver imbalance. And so you can make this argument for anything, vitamin C, vitamin D, and A, the, the, the whole milieu. And, and, but supplementation is supposed to add balance by making up for deficits in the diet. And so there, we're always going to have this conundrum of how much to supplement, always. Well, uh, very good point. And the real conundrum is if you're only supposed to have a half a percent of your total icosanoid as EPA, how delicate a mantle is that? If that goes to 1%, are there health consequences? of your total body fat. No, that's, that's a, the total uh, amount of icosanoids in the body at any one given time. That's we the don't know how many. See, that's the whole thing. We, 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 we can only make that estimate. Now, those icosanoids are measurable. By the way, uh, well, they are measurable, but I'm saying the average person has no inkling no, you, of where they're at. But you could, you could, and by the way, we do here at this office. We do measure, we do do a fatty acid analysis, and we determine what those are. So one could easily find out. Well, what, do you, what are, uh, in, in, let me say, what have you seen thus far in an, in an adult? as far as these ratios, do you see them all over the board? They're all over the board, and remember, though, when I'm seeing a patient and I'm ordering this fatty acid analysis, I don't know whether you caught this on the show with the, uh, we did the, on Wednesday, but uh, this is ordered at Johns Hopkins. This is for the only place in the country that actually does this in the right way. So it's a pretty prestigious institution. I rely on the results um, wholeheartedly. But you can uh, get exact measurements, and I'm seeing people, by the way, who are coming to me with, they're really sick, they are really ill, and their conventional management has left them high and dry. Now, now you've heard of the picture before, yet whenever one starts looking at the fatty acid analysis, that's where you find them all over the place. These percentages um, get so, e it's so easy to see where the derangement is. If you're supposed to have half a percent, and, uh, and you've got that uh, 20%, you, we got a problem, Houston. And yeah. so if people can have that kind of distortion... But I would tend to think that since we eat such an inflammatory diet, the American diet, fat diet, I would tend to think that if you did profiles and everybody came in your office, you would see a profile that would be more inflammatory than anti-inflammatory. But... Then you'd have to go back and say, well, is this a person that eats a lot of omega-3s and has inflammation, or is this a person who has a total imbalance of the omega-6 and the rachidonic and the omega-9 and so on and so forth? It's, how, how do you go about pinning the tail on the donkey here? Well, I think uh, you've asked very good questions. I'm going to leave you with another conundrum, okay? Because you just threw two more big words out here, okay, which is inflammatory and non-inflammatory. And how about this? And I'll leave you with it, and I promise to have Ed Kane in a way that only he can do it, explain why it is that inflammation ain't all that bad. Okay? Well, that's right. There is a positive. And there is absolutely a benefit to having your inflammatory mechanisms fully functioning. And when you start taking such an anti-inflammatory as fish oil, there's a consequence to pay based on that alone. I agree with that. I'm All right. Just, well, we're going to leave an, with an agreement. <laughs> we'll leave each other with an agreement today. Stay tuned. The fish oil war, wars will continue. Science will beat us all. They'll take both of us and straighten us both out, okay? All right. Wonderful talking to that gentleman. He always has some great enlightenment. And uh, uh, we'll be back with that entire discussion with Ed next Wednesday. We'll pick it up with the arachidonic acid and the icosanoids and let your education, you can handle this, folks. Uh, this is not, we're not going to get into uh, a, a great deal of biochemistry, but uh, even the most rudimentary of, uh, of explanations you should be able to be kept at a level that you can handle and that uh, you are ready for this group, my group, they're ready for it. All right, let's do this. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to visit with Jerry Singleton. We're not going to have much time with Jerry, but you need to hear his voice again, folks, because MCGs are returning to the office in the month of August. And if you're out there and you t need to be retested, you need to be calling in to set those up. Be back in a moment with Jerry. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. 
become confused about how best to manage your health. It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough that no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system yeah. repair, natural hormone yeah, replacement the therapy, chelation the therapy, cutting-edge allergy yeah. correction, yeah. and hosts of other safe and effective yeah. alternative yeah. therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, yeah. M.D., yeah. is located yeah. at 375 yeah. Washington yeah. Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Want to help your family eat healthier? Instead of learning to disguise tofu with wondrous ways, how about some real nutritional power? If your family has the typical American palate for fried pizza and burgers, giving your family the blessing of good nutrition is a struggle. Fruit of the Spirit is the answer for your family's nutritional needs. Fruit of the Spirit is an all-natural, whole fruit puree made from fresh fruits native to the Holy Land with alkalizing minerals. Fruit of the Spirit was five years in the formulation, the work of a team of top nutritional experts with independent science to confirm its antioxidant power. One ounce a day provides the equivalent of five servings of fruits and minerals. Fruit of the Spirit is convenient, affordable, and delicious. Even your picky family will sing the praises of Fruit of the Spirit. Give your loved ones the blessing of good nutrition. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. That's one 800 442-3793. Call them now. 1-800-442-3793. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Here we are on a Friday morning version of the show. It is a get em up out of time version of the show. We do ask you, if you get a mind to, to give us a call at 412 412- Eight two five six two six two. Why? You go right ahead. That's four one two eight two five six two six two. Today's guest, uh, you all met him many times before, folks, because uh, well, he's been a frequent visitor to us. He brings us a uh, a method of, of cardiovascular analysis that well, it's just uncanny how this device we call it MCG can actually do what it claims it can do. We've seen the evidences of it now. Many, many times over with multiple patients we've done here at the office. Um, Jerry represents a company that distributes and markets a device in the area and has been a frequent assistant and uh, really spearheader in our office of doing these tests. Uh, we've got some time to spend with them this morning, and then uh, we're going to welcome them back right now and say good morning, Jerry. How are you today? Good. Thank you very much, Dr. Sporting. Thanks for inviting me on. Oh, I've been waiting to get you back here, Jerry, as you well know. We've been working behind the scenes to finally procure a device that we can get here and have here at all times. And, Jerry, we're at the precipice of getting this device, are we not? Correct. We are there. Right. So we apologize to you out there. And I am getting phone calls, Jerry, from plenty of the people that we've already tested. They know their three months is up and they want to get at it. And uh, it looks to me as though we should be able to accomplish this objective in the month of August. Is there any way we won't be able to do that, Chair? No, I think that'll be, it'll probably be late August for your, for your listeners if they uh, I think just kind of keep in the back of their mind, probably sometime later August. But uh, absolutely, uh, I'm sure I'm sure you'll be announcing a date you know, uh, as, we, as, we, as we approach, but uh, uh, for the latter end of August, we'll be doing a, uh, a, a one final clinic day where we'll I'll be in the office with you, and then it will be there full time. Now, um, is it going to be, you think, because normally Thursdays have worked out for you. You think it'll be a Thursday? I do. I, I believe that it will it'll end up being a Thursday. All right. So even though you can't tell us which one of the, we'll just say one of the final two Thursdays of the month, I'm guessing, okay? Right. So uh, although right today you won't be able to tell us which one that will be, if you're out there, folks, and you are, and you're going to look at your book, you're going to look. Maybe he's looking, folks. Maybe we, maybe we'll actually come up with a date. You there, Jerry? Jerry, did we lose him, folks? <laughs> I 
Hello, Jerry. Well, while we're waiting for Jerry's return, there is a knock on the door. Come on the store. Hello, and welcome aboard. Hello, Dr. Corby. Hi. I have a question. What do you think about Corella and Spirulina in terms of the supplements you take in? Can you take them out of this time? Um, well, of course, Spirulina uh, is one of the algae uh, that is, has quite a bit of uh, information to support the health benefits to take from it. Uh, chlorella, not not an algae, but literally a plant-derived substance, which has been known for the longest time to be very helpful uh, to uh, chelate out heavy metals. I mean, people use this as the natural substance to do just that, as opposed to taking harsh chemicals. Um, I would say in both cases, um, any supplements that you take that would have either of those two in it would be of benefit to you. Um, there are some other... Um, of the algae that would be ones that I would add to that regime. By the way, there's a product called uh, um, BAC, Bioengineered Algae Concentrates, uh, in, in which we talk about these forms of algae that have nutritional benefit and supplemental benefit. And uh, of the thousands and thousands of algae out there that have been evaluated, it all came down to four of those thousands that a scientist by the name of Dr. Michael Kiriak determined that he would like to include in his supplement product, and one of those four is spirulina. So you pick the right one, okay? All right, thank you, Doctor. All right. Are we back? Jerry. Hey, I'm back. I apologize. What happened to you, Jerry? My phone cut out on you. I oh, is that what it was? I'm sorry? Uh, okay, I didn't realize. I, we thought you turned to look for your book. We thought you were looking I for a date. Did. <laughs> the uh, a safe bet what I, I'm looking at with uh, there's a possibility around August 18th. Okay. Uh, but more likely it'll probably be the 25th. Uh, if that works for you, Dr. Courtney. All right. We'll just put them out there for our listeners today. That it's going to be one of those two Thursdays. Do you think that you'll be able to tell me by the time next week rolls around so that we can give them? Absolutely. Enough? All right. So if you think that you're involved with this, and you know who you are out there, folks. If you've been MCG tested in the past. It's a day. well, Jerry. Tell our audience what MCG testing is, with a minute or two to go. At least explaining to them uh, what, why anybody's going to do such a thing as this. Those of you out there trying to schedule are doing so because you've already done the test and you know what a benefit it is. But what's MCG all about, Jerry? MCG testing is a reminder to the patients that have had it and to some that uh, might have heard about it but haven't had an opportunity to participate is a, um, it's a five to six minute resting test that we do in, in the office. Uh, it, it gives us a test that we can uh, provide data with, with relation to ischemia or coronary artery disease which is the slow accumulation of plaque in the coronary arteries that surround the heart which would make one at risk for a heart attack or stroke. Uh, this is a test that's very, very accurate. It's a newer technology. It's been out. It was FDA approved in 2000. Uh, it's reimbursable by most all major insurance carriers, uh, depending on plan and policy. But, uh, you know, it's something that there's a lot of medical journals out there uh, that have been published on it. There's a lot of data out there. It's used in a lot of major physician offices in our area. And uh, it offers a lot of value to the patient that uh, that otherwise might not know where they stand with regards to this, uh, because it is the number one cause of death in the United States. It's the number one cause for emergency room visits, and most often patients either have uh, no symptoms or very limited symptoms for it. So it's very very important uh, for patients to uh, to be tested. Um, if, you know, if they fit into the into the category where they where they might have some family history or or some other risk factors that that would maybe put them at a higher risk for this, or they they have some level of concern that, that it might be worth uh, kind of doing a, a test to uh, to see where they stand. Uh, this can provide us a lot of very valuable data with regards to that heart and those arteries. Yeah, I, I've always put this in a more vernacular term, and you seem to have uh, always supported me when I did use this rather grotesque description, but nonetheless, I think it's pretty accurate, but uh, we're able to gain the information um, that one could gain as though you had a complete, full-blown cardiac catheterization. Lord knows we'd never want anybody not to have one of those, but because there's so much risk associated with them. But the information, that's different, because that information is really important. But we can get 
that same information by using MCG testing in six minutes, lying on a bed, fully clothed, with a clip around each ankle and one lead placed on the chest. And so in six minutes, we can get the same information as one could get if they subjected themselves to a full-blown cardiac cath to know the status of what those coronary arteries are. Now, I, I think that that's a great, um, that should be heralded in the scientific world as a wonderful accomplishment. Electronics has uh, continued to improve, but this is, a, this is an imagination that is brand spanking new, and this is the only device at this time that does that. Isn't that right, Jer? That's correct, it, and, and uh, it does so with, them, with, a, with a very high degree of accuracy against the heart. Uh, and, and we get a, a lot of that same valuable information, uh, you know, when we're looking at, at whether the patient has it, and then if they do have it, the severity. Well, um, I know that for that six minutes, uh, patients have really, some been very surprised. Um, I, I have seen all scores. By the way, this score does not come back similar to a cardiac cath. You know, get a cath, they tell you, well, this vessel is this percent occluded, this vessel is this percent occluded. We don't get percentage of occlusions, but we do get a raw score somewhere between 0 and 20, which has that validity and accuracy that you're talking about and does indicate to a degree of what? I think you say 91%. Is that what you say? The, the combined studies, and there's been a number of, of published uh, medical uh, reviewed articles out there, that seems, seems to be the consensus, correct? All right. Now, look, we got bongos in the background, Jerry. It's a short time for us today. I just wanted to bring you on board to let our listeners know you're back and that uh, by the beginning of the week, I'll have those dates so that they can take the next step. All right, Jer? Fantastic. I look forward to it. Okay, folks, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed our show today. The fish oil fights are underway. I'll talk more about it on Monday. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney with Mr. Jerry Singleton saying so long for AM Impact on Your Health. by Dennis J. Courtney, M.D., director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in Perry, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002.